in the context of our battles, then we're able to understand and also appreciate his goodness unto us. First Samuel chapter 17, and I want to read verses 40 to 51. It's the last bit of a portion of the story, and I'm sure many of us know the story already. Shall we hear the word of the Lord? Verse 40, then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth, smooth stones from the stream, put them in the porch of his shepherd's bag, and with a sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? The Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the bears of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled, this day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the bears of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, but the battle is the Lord's. And he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistines moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell, fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand. He struck down the Philistine and killed him. Hallelujah. And David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the scabbard. After he killed him, he cut off his head with a sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Hallelujah. In our victory in the Lord, the enemy will have to run. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray together? Father, we are grateful to you for tonight. The opportunity and the grace granted us, O oh God, once again to open your word. I pray the Lord you will anoint the word and speak and grant us grace to hear from you even as you speak tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The text before us is set in the context of a battle. A battle between the Philistines and Israel. And if you go back to read the story, we're told that for several days, one of the Philistines by name Goliath, in this context, as the two armies of the two nations stood on a hill, and somehow within the valley was the battleground. The Philistine had chosen a man by name Goliath who would always come forward and shout at Israel and tell them if there is a man in Israel, let him come forth. And I believe that there are several times in our own lives that certain things confront us and we get to those moments in our lives when we don't know whether we should go forward or even go back. And this man stood and day in and day out he continued to taunt Israel. And Israel was confronted with a, with a giant that they could not deal with. We're told that Goliath was about nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor. And he would come forward and shout and tell Israel, choose a man and let him come down to me. And whenever Goliath shouted, everybody in Israel was frozen. And beloved, you and I sometimes are confronted with those giants in our lives. That causes us each passing day to freeze. And the Goliath that you and I deal with is not the kind of Goliath that brandishes a sword in his hand. But it's the Goliath that confronts us with the lack of job. The Goliath that confronts us when it comes to food cost. 
the Goliath that confronts us when it comes to the payment of school fees of our kids, that Goliath that confronts us in terms of our sicknesses and the issues of health that confronts us, that Goliath that confronts us when it comes to our businesses and even in our marital issues and problems, that Goliath that comes along and confronts us in various aspects of our lives that sometimes we have no answers to. And it causes us to freeze. And it does not only phase us in the hills of Elah, but comes through us and through to us, sometimes at the workplaces, and sometimes even in the bedrooms. When you find a man and a woman sleeping on the same bed, and somehow it looks like there's a dividing wall in the middle of the bed, when nobody has even divided the wall. And you find the two people sleeping on the same bed, nobody is asleep, and yet they appear to be sleeping. And sometimes you hear a sigh, then you begin to realize that the other party is not asleep yet, and yet you don't talk. That Goliath that confronts us in the bed is what we are talking about this morning, tonight. The Goliath that confronts us sometimes in the classrooms, in the case of students where you struggle with your books and struggle with understanding what you are being taught. And sometimes whenever you see that textbook, you are frozen. You don't even know what to do and how to confront those things. These are the things that we're talking about. The Goliath that confronts us in our homes. And sometimes you are, you are dealing with kids that you don't even know how to manage. And those are the things that I'm talking about. The Goliath that even confronts us sometimes in church. When you begin to realize that the battle in the church is sometimes even greater than the battle outside the church. These are the issues we are talking about. Those Goliaths that you meet in the malls. And sometimes you get into the malls and walk into a shop and somebody picks up a confrontation with you. You don't understand. You don't know where it's coming from. And yet, that attack is coming. And there are issues that confront us. And sometimes you get to those moments in your life you don't even know what to do with yourself. The Goliath that we are talking about is that Goliath who brings bills along our way that we cannot pay. People that we can't please. Whatever you do, they are unsatisfied. And sometimes he comes against us with sin that we cannot resist. And the past that we cannot even shake off. And the future that we are even afraid to face. That is the Goliath that I'm talking about tonight. Those situations in life that makes us, you and I, freeze and unable to respond because we have no answers to the battle that confronts us. This is the Goliath I'm talking about tonight. The giants that we face today may be issues that you, you, you don't immediately have answers to. Sometimes you get up in the morning and you receive a call coming back from home and you don't know whether to pick the phone or not because you see that number and you know that there is a Goliath that is coming. And an encounter that you know you cannot deal with. And anytime you see that number, something happens to you. That Goliath that confronts you that when that phone call comes from that particular number, you are expecting some bad news. And yes, somehow you don't know how to deal with this. This is the issue we are talking about. That Goliath stood before Israel. And any time he shouted, if there is a man in Israel, let him come. Everybody was dodging. Nobody wanted to go there. And there are, I believe that there are issues in our lives that confront us that way. And for 40 days, Goliath had been frightening the people of Israel. They had been to this battle and yet they didn't know what to do. And in the midst of this, a young man, David was sent to the battlefield. A young boy who has been keeping the sheep, the father told him, can you go and visit your brothers and send them some, some resources? Probably they will find something to eat. And the father was so wise that he told this young man, when you go there, give a little bit to the captain of the army so that at least you will bribe him a little bit to be sure that he does not take my kids and put them in the front line. The father, even though he was not even in the battlefield, he was even having his own Goliath in his bedroom. <laughs> Hallelujah. When David got there, he saw what was happening and he started asking questions. Who is this man? And why does he come in every morning to stand there and begin to shout? And when he shouts, everybody freezes. Who is this man? The brothers looked at him and said, David, you better shut up over there. This is not a joke. This is not a battle for kids. You only came here to supply provision. Just do it and go back. David said, no. So can't I even ask questions? I'm only asking questions and I demand answers. You see, the truth is that the people who cannot deal with their own Goliath, 
think that everybody else can deal with their Goliath as well. Amen? And because they cannot deal with this, they want everybody else to be like them. So if I can't solve my problem, you can't also solve it. And David was asking questions and trying to find out simply who is this man? And why does he stand here, here to defy the armies of the people of Israel, the army of God? And nobody has an answer to this. Who is this man? The Goliath that you and I are confronted with. Maybe a Goliath whose voice we are able to recognize. Just like David, he recognized the voice of that man. He saw him walking day in and day out. But the issue is, do you only see Goliath and nothing else? You know his voice. And that voice that comes through the telephone. That, that voice that speaks through your supervisor when you get to work. You know that voice. But is that the only voice that you hear? David saw and heard much more than that. Hallelujah. So he asked questions. Who is this man? And when he asked the question, who is this man? The next thing that David says is, who is this man who is defying the army of God? For the people who are at the battlefield, they only saw a Goliath and an enemy. David went to the battle, saw Goliath, but also saw the army of God. Are you hearing me? And sometimes we are confronted with issues that you and I are not able to look beyond what we see. We only see a problem and we think that that is the end of it. David said, who is this man? Who is defying the army of God? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And while his brothers and soldiers sought Goliath, David was raising the question about the living God. Amen? And so you hear friends who will come to you and anytime they come, they come with problems. And they keep talking and keep talking and keep talking as if they cannot close their mouth. And all they are talking about are problems. And this is you. And I went here and the thing didn't go well. And I had a phone call in my supervisor and met my kid. And but in the midst of this, do you see that there is a God who is able to do far more abundantly than what you can think of or even imagine? He is the one who on Calvary made a declaration. It is finished. And when he made that declaration, he had won the victory for you and I. That before we even get into that battle, he has already won the victory. And that is why we are talking about our victory in him. And so David looked at them and said, what is happening to you that Israel cannot confront this man? They looked at him and said, young boy, you better shut up. He said, you know, I can confront this man. How are you going to do it? The God who has been with me when I'm taking care of the sheep, who has helped me when birds come to devour my own sheep and I can hold them and tear them apart, it is that same God who will be with me to defeat this man. Amen. Beloved, the essence of sharing testimony is not just to pride ourselves, but the essence of sharing a testimony is to affirm that the God who has done it before can do it again. And sometimes we, we come to church and we hear people telling stories about what God has done in their lives. And we, but why is he the only one who talks? And maybe on this battlefield, everybody else had shut up apart from David. And you might be that David in TBC who is ready to shout and talk about what God has done to be able to encourage all others to begin to understand that the God who said it is finished did not proclaim that only on behalf of one person, but proclaim it on behalf of every one of us. It is finished. Hallelujah. So David said, the God who delivered me from the pulse of the lion and from the pulse of the bear, he would deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. While no one else discussed God but talked about David, David changed the subject and began to talk about God. Are you hearing me? 
Beloved, everybody in your house, everybody at your workplace may be able to talk about problems. But I want you and I to understand that we serve a God who is a problem solver. We serve a God who holds the whole world in his hands. We serve a God who is able to do anything and far more than even what you and I can even think of. Hallelujah. And so he saw something else that all the others were not seeing. All eyes. Except David focused on this man. But David saw something beyond the man who was standing before them. They had majored in Goliath, but David had majored on God. There are people in our lives who are only talking about demons. And that demon and that witch and that demon and that witch, we will sing the praise of our God consistently. Because we go to the battle in victory already. And once we get there, we sing the songs of praise and the songs of victory. Because he's already won the battle for us. Hallelujah. Amen. And David said, who is this man who is defying the armies of God? David was seeing an army. The other saw something different. So he told them he wanted to face the man. He sent news to the king that there is the young man on the battlefield. Who is saying something? We brought him here so that you can hear him. And David had already asked a question. What will happen to the man who is able to defeat this guy? He said, well, the king says, whoever defeats him, his people will not pay taxes again. Whoever defeats this man, the king is going to give her daughter for him to marry. So David sat back and said, well, can I become a prince overnight? And be married to the daughter of the king? You see, when people are seeing problems, others see opportunities. Are you hearing me? Let me share with you a testimony. I did run my own private business in 1988. And I managed it for 19 years. Part of it was running business and running church at the same time. And everybody kept on asking me, including my own mother, that you went to school to study accounting. You were practicing as an accountant. How come you are doing cassette and music business? I looked at her mom and said, well, when people see problems, you also need to open your eye to see opportunities. And we had been part of a group in Kumasi in Ghana in those days called the New Creation, an evangelical musical group. We're founders of the group. We had doing, been doing music all along and we're singing and recording. And in those days back in the 80s, it was very difficult to find any means of reproducing your music. And those of us who are a little bit old, you knew that in those days, if you wanted to find cassettes, the cassettes that were available were Sony and Maxell and probably TDK. The young ones may not know. <laughs> and they were made in either C60 or C90 or C120. Music in those days was only a matter of 35 minutes. In fact, it's 32 minutes. The maximum you may find is 35. And so when we started producing cassettes as mass production in the country, and I was doing the recording for New Creation, later on became the production manager for Joy Freeway Incorporated, I noticed there were difficulty finding cassettes to produce music. And everybody had been going round and round and round trying to find a solution to this. And we, we used to get a cassette in C60, we do the recording for 35 minutes, we either cut the tape and pull some along and rejoin it, and you know what that means. The amount of work that goes into that. Later on, what we used to do was, after you produce one half of the music, you repeat two songs on one side and repeat two songs on the other so that you can feel the tape. The old people can identify with that. But as I sat down and looked at this problem, I said to myself, isn't there any way out of this? 
I started searching. I started searching until I came across a 46-minute cassette. So I tried to use that, and we had to still repeat a few songs. I was still not satisfied with this. In 1990, I went to Korea, South Korea. Worked out with SKM, Sunkyong Magnetic Company. Now they call them SKC. I saw some tapes of them some years back. And worked with those people for two years. They helped me to set up my own factory in Ghana to produce cassette tapes. Between 1992 and 2005, when I finally retired from business, I was producing 20,000 cassettes a day from my own factory. My company was the first to introduce CD production in Ghana. And we did several other things. Now, why am I saying this? When people see problems, see what opportunities. See opportunities. And I trust that all the things that are happening, some of us who are here want to go back home and, and do some business. It is true that Doomsaw is there. It is true the other problems are there. But what are the opportunities? One of the big companies in Ghana now is what? Zoom Lion. And what does Zoom Lion do? Rubbish. Trash. And you and I know that people who are in that business in this country have the money. There are people in, in the back home who are now doing laundry services. There are those who are doing gardening. They have their machines at the back of their pickups. They move from house to house into gated communities and take contracts. Others are doing landscaping. When people see problems, you see opportunities. David said, what is going to happen to anybody who is able to defeat this man? They said, well, if you're able to do it, the king is going to give you the wife, the, the, the daughter. He said, well, then I'm ready for it. They took him to the king. The king gave him his own battle garments and said, David, can you wear this? The man did put it on as a young boy. He took one, two, three steps and said, King, I'm not used to this. Can you take it off? And you see, for a short period, when the king gave his own garment to David, he took only five steps, but he had become a king for five steps. Are you here? Because he was wearing what the, the attire of the king. Hallelujah. You see, when you are in the midst of a battle, that is when you begin to see the victory that the Lord has already won. The young boy took a few steps and he said, King, I can't go with this. You see, I want to do, go to that battle with what I'm used to. Some of us are fighting battle with the tools of other people. You see, when you want to pray, you want to be like the papa. Oh, may the Lord do it. That is not the way you are. You go to battle with what you are what used to. Amen. May the Lord have mercy on us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You go with bat to battle with what you are used to. David said, I'm not used to this. Take it off and let me go with what I'm used to. Because I have been to the battlefield. I have tested the power of God. I have seen the demonstration of his hand. And I have seen the victory that the Lord has won for me. I am going to use those things to face this man. Not what you provide. Hallelujah. Because the God that you and I are serving is bigger than the giant. People look at that giant and think that this is impossible. But when you focus on the giant, you will see what is impossible. When you begin to look at God, then you are going to see that which is far more than possible. So David said, Cain, I can do, do, go with this. He came back and took his own garment those who have lived in the villages in the past before, you know what it is in Africa. When we say that the young boy has his cloth on, you put that tape, two yards of cloth of your mother and tie it around your neck. And David had a sling by his side. The Bible says that he walked to the riverside and picked only five stones. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about the five stones. Pick 
those five stones and came to face the man. When he got to the battle lines, the Bible says that his brothers were so afraid that they started covering their eyes. What is that boy going to do over there? The Bible said they were afraid and they were embarrassed. Hallelujah. Afraid and embarrassed. You see, when you only see Goliath in your life, you become afraid and also you become embarrassed. Because you don't know what to do and you think that that is your failure. But I also want you to understand that Jesus has already declared it is finished. Before we start that battle, he's already won it. And if you and I are going to go in the strength of the Lord, we will recognize that we are far more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Saul, who addressed David, saw this young man running to the battle and saw himself was afraid. What is going to happen to this, this boy? But you see, David did not see a giant. He saw a mortal man who was defying the Lord God Almighty. Are you with me? This was a man who was defying God. Beloved, I want you to understand that the name Christian was not chosen by us. The fact that you are a child of God, you need to recognize that it is he who chose you and I. Amen. We are bearers of his name. Hallelujah. Amen. So when somebody touches you, he is touching the apple of the eye of the Lord. And many times we don't see ourselves that way. And so we think that, well, you see, it is my battle and, and I can't fight it. David said, I see a mortal man. Hallelujah. Amen. And while everybody thought that David, young boy, was going to face the battle, David said, who is this man? Who is defying the army of God? For David, he knew he was not alone. But the army of God was with him. The Lord has already assured us, I'll be with you till the close of the age. Beloved, there are many instances in our lives that we begin to move and do things and we feel like we are all alone. But I want you to understand that your God is always by your side. And if you're going to see him by your side, you will understand that the victory has already been won before the battle began. David said, who is this man who is defying the army of the Lord? And he knew that he was not alone. He looked at Goliath and saw be, beyond Goliath something much more bigger. The Bible says that Goliath saw this young man coming. He said, what? Israel? Is that all you got? This boy. And if you look at the text of the scripture, is that he saw him as what? A young boy. He was ruddy. But also he was handsome. Did you hear that? Yeah. He was also what? Handsome. I tell you, you see, the enemy may seek to do everything, but he sees the quality of what God has already done in your life. And sometimes we look at ourselves and we, we think we are nobody. In spite of all that Goliath said, he said that he was what? Handsome. And when he saw the boy, he started laughing. Look at Israel. Is that all that you can produce? That you see a man like me standing here thick and tall, even my own Abba Bear. The one who is holding my shield is even strong, stronger and bigger than this boy. Is that all that you've got? Beloved, the battle is the loss. When you begin to understand that, we don't go with spears and javelin because the battle is the loss. It is not about how big your army is. The God that you and I serve specializes in the small things. 
Remember he told Gideon, the army is even too small, too big. Cut it down. Bring it down to a small proportion. The battle is the Lord's. And Goliath looked at David and began to laugh at him. The Bible says that he was a man thick and tall. He had a helmet of bronze on his head. He had covered his feet with everything. But he stood there laughing at this boy. Look at him. Is that all that you, you have? I've already indicated when people see problems, you see opportunities. Goliath had covered himself and all the people who stood on the side of Israel looked at the man and said, how are you even going to penetrate to this man? He's covered. He's protected. There's no way you're going to get through to him. David saw an opportunity. You see, and when Goliath stood there, started laughing. Look at him. Ha, 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 ha. Look at him. Look at this boy. Look at him. By doing this, he had opened that small window that David saw and said, that is the opportunity. And I need to hit it. He slung it and off he goes. One stone straight into that empty space. And there Goliath was on the ground. Beloved, you need to see opportunities. Hallelujah. When everybody was running, the Bible says that David ran to face Goliath. When people see problems and they are retreating, the child of God goes forward knowing that the Lord is with me. When everybody thinks that it's impossible to do it, we do it because we know that the Lord is with us. He rushed on Goliath, took one stone, and off Goliath was. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want you to begin to understand that when you maximize God, when you amplify the Lord, he minimizes your Goliath. All along, people were talking about Goliath. David said, who is this man who is defying the army of God? The God who has been with me even on the field, He's the same God who will be with me here. Everybody was talking about Goliath. David was talking about the things that God has done. Beloved, may praise fill your mouth. Are you with me? Sometimes we see the problem and we tell God, God, we know it's there. Yes, it is there, but we want to praise you because I know from the story of his same Israelites, as they walk around the walls of Jericho, they could not even get through to the wall, but their praise alone brought down the wall. See that you have a God who is able to do far more than you can think of or imagine. The giant of depression may take some time to disturb us, but we need to tell that giant, you will never conquer. No matter how long you want to build your castle in my house and even in my brain, remember I have a God who is able to do far more than you can think of or imagine. With one sling, David was able to overcome Goliath. And as we read this story, and I want you to take time and read that, so I'm going to spend the next three days dealing with this same story. David makes nine references to God in the simple story. And only two to Goliath. Nine times he's talking about God. I want you and I to understand that the more we magnify the enemy, we make the enemy look so big as if we can never defeat that enemy. But tonight, we want to magnify the Lord. We want him to, to be in that position. Because we know that the battle has already been won by him. And all we need to do is to walk in that victory that he has provided for us. Hallelujah. And I want you and I to, to look at the same thing in our own lives. Do you ponder over God's grace more than pondering over your own guilt? Do you ponder over 
your list of complaints instead of looking at the list of blessings as we begin the year with our prayer and fasting I believe you are still crying Lord do this for me this year but have you taken time to reflect on the past year and all the blessings that you receive and can you say that if God did it last year he is going to do far more than I can even think of or imagine and those things that you and I never thought that we could go through he took us through and why can't we trust him the more hallelujah can you describe the strength and the power of God more than the mental struggle that you go through each day? Let us give God the praise. Hallelujah. You see, tonight, if I want to sum up all that I've said, I'll say that when you stumble, focus more on your giant, you will stumble. But when you focus more on God, your giant will stumble. Therefore, we need to lift up our eyes and see that he who won the victory already for us has said it is finished. I will be with you till the close of the age. And all he told us was go and wait, which we are doing this week. Go and do what? Wait until you have received power from on high. And beloved, we need that power which will give us the grace to consistently walk in that victory each day. Peter, who looked at a small girl on that night when Jesus was arrested, the young girl looked at him and said, Peter, you were one of them. He said, no, I know, I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't even know the man. I've never been with him. That same Peter on the day of Pentecost, after he had received power from on high, walked to the beautiful gate and saw a young man who's been sitting there all the time, begging. And every day Peter and John have passed through that door and I've seen that young man sitting there. But when the Holy Spirit touched them, when they got to that gate, the Bible says that the man was asking for arms. They turned and looked at him again. And looked at him again. And told that young man, look at us. Look at us. Eyeball to eyeball. Silver and gold we don't have. But what we have, we want to give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. When they held his hand and pulled that boy, he got up and started walking. Beloved, I want to tell you that when that power from above touches your life, it is you that make, who makes the difference. And when David had experienced that power and had seen the hand of God move in his own life, he could stand there and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Tonight, I don't know the uncircumcised Philistine in your life. But we want to magnify the Lord and bring our own victory before our own eyes that the Lord that fights our battle for us has already said it is finished we are not going to go before him like people who don't have anything but we go before him like kings and princes because for this particular moment he has given us the opportunity to come and ask and he says ask and you shall receive so we want to receive from him tonight the strength and the power to be able to walk through this year with his anointing and his grace to win the battles of life, to bring him glory and honor. Let's rise as we go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Tonight you've heard the voice of the Lord. The battle is the Lord's. Are you hearing me? The battle is who? The is the Lord's. No matter what you and I are going through, no matter what our struggle is, what our problems are, what our challenges might be, 
tonight we want to lift them up and place them at the feet of the Lord. Now I'm going to ask you to do your own personal prayer at this time before we do the, the, the other general ones. We want to come before the Lord and say, Lord, this is my battle. This is my war. And some of us are even going through walking civil war. You know that? What that means? You find somebody who is walking all alone and yet he is talking. There's nobody with you and yet you are talking. Going through your own personal working civil war. There are problems and issues that are confronting us. But tonight we want to lay them at the feet of the Lord. And as we lay them there, we say, Lord, take them. We want to go out and walk in your victory. That the banner of the Lord will be lifted up that God's name will alone will be glorified. Just open up your mouth tonight and speak to the Lord. Whatever that need is, whatever that struggle is, whatever has been confronting you all along, lay it at the feet of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Don't hold back anything, but just lay it at the feet of the Lord. He is more than able to do more than you and I can accomplish. Lift it all up before him tonight. He is able to do far more than you and I can even want to pray again this time remember those people in your life who don't even bring any good news anytime they come closer to you they are bringing that which will cause you to become more depressed they only come closer to you with problems and even when you are trying to take yourself out of this life they will continue to talk about problems Tonight, we want to pray that the Lord will give us the grace that this year, he will give us people in our lives who are encouragers to be able to encourage us through the issues and the struggles that we go through to bring us to that place where we ought to be. Shall we talk to the Lord at this moment? Pray for those people in your life who will be an encouragement to you, who will lift you up, help you to be able to stand. Father, we stand at the threshold of grace in the name of Jesus. Bow before your presence, O God, in the name that is above every name. We plead the blood of the Lord Jesus. We are that your sovereign hand, O God. We lift it up, O God, over the lives of your people. Give us grace to find support where we need support. Give us grace to find help where we need help. Give us grace to find
next thing we want to, want to pray about is against the spirit of fear and embarrassment. That would cause you to freeze. We want to speak against that spirit tonight in the name of the Lord. Anything that will bring an embarrassment into your life, an embarrassment upon your family, an embarrassment upon your children, tonight we want to arrest that spirit in the name of the Lord. I want you to open your mouth and speak to that spirit. Command in the name of the Lord to lose his hold against every hold of your life, every hold over your business, every hold over your work, every hold over your children. Cause a release tonight in the name of the Lord. Speak to that in the name of Jesus. Father, we stand at the threshold of grace. Tonight in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we command that stronghold, that power, that spirit of fear, that holds us in the that calls us to do the thing that you want us to do. We speak again that in the name of Jesus Christ. We break that hold, we break that hold, we break that hold over the lives of your people. We cause the release of your favor and of your grace and of your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nashad Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we break down the spirit of fear, the spirit of embarrassment. We banish it from our lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask that your grace and your favor and your power will be released. O God, and your people who walk in your counsel and your grace and your favor tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we rebuke, we rebuke, we rebuke the spirit of fear. We command you to lose your hold over the people of God. We cause a release tonight in the name of Jesus. We break down every shackle, we break down every shackle, we break down every shackle. We cause a release of the grace and the favor in the name of Jesus. the spirit of fear and embarrassment we want to commit our own families into God's hands pray for God's protective grace to be upon each and every one of us from the head of the family to the lowest we want to bring all of them before the grace of God pray that the hand of the Lord will rest upon each and every one of us pray for your children pray for God's hand to lift them up that every day the Lord will set them above their own foes. That wherever they go, the blessing of the Lord will be upon them. 
Open your mouth and talk to the Lord at this moment. In the name of Jesus. Talk to him at this moment. Release God's favor and release God's grace. Oh my God. We pray in the name of Jesus. We ask that the sovereign hand of the Lord will be upon this family. Protect and keep your people. We bring them under the cover of the Lord. Under the protective hand of the Messiah. We pray for your grace and your favor. To rest upon each and every one of them. Grant them favor, grant them favor, grant them favor. Grant them favor wherever they go. Grant them favor wherever they go. Open the eyes of oh God. Yes, they were born of a blessing of God in the name of Jesus. May they experience your prosperity and your blessing and your grace. May every facet of our lives find rest of God in the lives of your people. May they behold your glory, behold your power. Behold grace and mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Release the heaven of God upon your people. Release grace upon your people. Release mercy upon your people tonight. In the name that is above every name, even in the name of Jesus. In God's glory, we bring something. May Jehovah our God be made manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ of God. What opportunities are available to you and I? David saw opportunities. And tonight we want to cry unto God that he will open doors. He will open up opportunities. He will open much more grace unto us. We want to cry unto him that from the beginning of this first month to the end of the year, may doors be opened to his people. May doors be open to his church. May doors be open to our families. Open your mouth and let's talk to him at this moment. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we pray that the hand of the most high. We made money from the cross of God. Open doors of grace. Open doors of mercy. Open doors of glory. Open doors of opportunities. We are people of God. In the name of Jesus. In all our strength, we doors be open. May you cause your grace and favor to shine upon us. May the anointing of the Lord be upon your people. May God's favor and God's grace rest upon your people. In the name of Jesus, my Lord. Father, I pray. May your hand of God be lifted up. May doors be open to your people. May doors be open to your church. May the opportunity that the Lord has set before us be made manifest to God tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. Oh, may your hand of God be made manifest. May Jehovah our God be established. May the glory of God be made manifest. May Jehovah our King be made manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may God's glory, may God's anointing, may God's power, may God's grace rest upon your people. We live for God to bring glory and honor unto you in every facet of our life, in every flower of our life. We bring Jehovah our God, open doors, open doors, open doors of your people. Cause us, O God, to behold your glory. Cause us, O God, to behold your power. Cause us, O God, to behold your majesty. Cause us, O God, to behold your majesty. In the name of Jesus Christ of God. Yedoro Masia, Yandere Kedori Ama, Rapa Sato Yoma Keta Bori Ama Shaka, Yedori Masato Yoko Yoma Raka. In the name of the Lord, my Savior, my Savior, my Savior, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. May you lift up your hands. May praise and glory, may power and majesty. May Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, be made manifest. May his glory, may his power, may his praise, may his power, may we stand on the threshold of us. Also want to pray for open doors for TBC. Our prayer is that by the middle of this year, we would have moved from here. Amen. We want to pray for God's favor. Amen.
God's grace. Blood, what is it if we build an, a bigger place and the people will not feel it? We are praying for open doors that before we even get there, the Lord will have already established his people there. Let's talk to him at this moment. He's able to do far more than you and I can think of all you much. Finally, I want us to do a prayer for anyone here who has a pain in the leg. If you are such and you require the prayer of the saints, I want you to come forward as we lay hands on you and pray with you. Church, I want you to stretch forth your hands upon these saints. The Lord, who is already victorious, is our banner tonight. Pray that the hand of the Lord will touch his people. That the Lord will grant them total healing. In the name of Jesus, oh, shut up, oh, Sunday. May I ask my colleague ministers around, just come and lay hands on them for us. All the ministers who are here tonight, just lay your hand of faith upon them.
Father, we give you thanks for tonight. We give you the praise. You have said your word will never go and come back void. But you have declared your word tonight. I pray that may this word that has gone forth lift up your people to see the victory that you've already won for us. May we behold your glory and grant us grace to magnify you in every sphere of our lives. Be glorified in every life tonight. Every stronghold of the enemy over the mind of every individual tonight. I rebuke that hold and I cause a release in the name of Jesus. Grant your people the clarity of mind. To be able to see you and to behold you. That even when you speak, that we'll be able to hear. I pray, Father, tonight, may your victory on the cross be real to your people. May we walk in that victory to the praise and glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.